Hey guys, welcome to my first video of 2021, and we're going to kick this year off with a review of the latest photo editing software from Skylum, Luminar AI. I was fortunate enough last year to be able to review Luminar 4 when it came out, and overall I was very impressed with the software. It was a very powerful tool that, in my mind, essentially is like having Lightroom and Photoshop in one single package, and you don't have to rent it out on a monthly basis, you just buy it outright and that's it. However, there were some flaws with the software. Several areas had some glitches that were a bit of a nuisance and people were reporting reliability problems as well. So how does Luminar AI improve over Luminar 4? Well, before we get into that, a couple of quick disclaimers that I want to get out of the way first, just so that we're all on the same page for this video. Firstly, I've actually had a pre-release version of Luminar AI to test out for about the past two months. Now, while I was permitted to make videos about the software before it was officially released to the public, Skylum did categorically state there were several key areas of the software that they knew was going to be different in the final public version than what we had in the pre-release. So they didn't want us to cover any of that in any videos prior to the software being made public, which I thought was a little bit pointless. So I decided it was better to just wait and review the public version that you guys can actually buy when it was available, rather than review half of a pre-release version and then have to redo the review at a later date. Second disclaimer on the topic of you guys buying this software, if you are interested in purchasing Luminar AI having seen this review video, there is a link to it in the description down below, which is an affiliated link. So you can purchase this through Skylum directly using the link, but I will earn a commission in the process. That's obviously just for transparency here, so you're aware. But this, as always, will be an honest, unbiased review based on my experiences having used this software for the past few months. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of how good is Luminar AI. Now, with having the pre-release version, I was also invited onto several video calls with the guys at Skylum, where they went through all of the, you know, the press releases and showing us how the software works, etc., and allowing us to ask questions to them. And in those video calls, they were very keen to stress that Luminar AI is not a direct replacement or a successor to Luminar 4. It's a different philosophy entirely. Now, for current users of Luminar 4, I did ask them what the, the future is for Luminar 4, and Skylum have said they will continue to support 4 for at least the next 12 months with subsequent updates. After that, they don't know what the plan is yet, whether they'll continue to support Luminar 4 with new updates, whether they will replace it with soft, new software entirely, like, say, Luminar 5, or whether they will just cease all of that in favor of Luminar AI. I suppose it depends how everyone feels about AI by that point. But they are going to continue updates for Luminar 4 throughout 2021, so hopefully any reliability issues that some people have experienced will be a thing of the past by then. Fingers crossed. Now, Skylum are touting that Luminar AI will substantially speed up your workflow for editing. The notion of it being that the AI will take a lot of the legwork out of the edits for you rather than you having to do everything manually. And overall, I found this to be the case. The user interface for Luminar AI is much improved over Luminar 4. They've rejigged the menus to simplify them slightly. The tools have been grouped together in more obvious ways. The presets are also a lot easier to navigate if you are someone who uses presets. Previously with Luminar 4, they just had the options of the various looks along the bottom and you had a drop down tab that categorized them all and you'd have to go through each one and find whichever one you were actually looking for. With Luminar AI, you can still do that, but the software will recommend presets for you based on what it is seeing within your photo. So when you load an image into Luminar AI, the artificial intelligence will scan over your picture and it will ascertain what is the photo containing? Is it a portrait photo? Is it a landscape photo? If it is a landscape, is it rolling hills or mountains or nighttime and cityscapes? 
it will then recommend relevant presets based on what it is finding. If you then find a preset that you like the look of, you can apply it and then jump into the editing tab. If you don't, you just jump straight into the editing tab. Now, if I actually used presets, I would find that system a hell of a lot easier than the Luminar 4 way of doing it. The next obvious improvement is the overall speed of AI when you are editing is substantially faster than Luminar 4. When you're making changes now, there is a far shorter delay from you adjusting a slider to that adjustment appearing on your preview. So the overall speed of your workflow in making edits is quicker in Luminar AI than it was in Luminar 4. However, it's still not quite up to the mark of Lightroom, but it is substantially improved, which is great to see. The tool set in Luminar AI is different as well. It still has all the same tools that were present in Luminar 4. Some of these have been improved now, so they are a lot quicker. The AI Accent tool and the Sky Replacement tool, notably, load a lot faster now in Luminar AI than they did in Luminar 4. There's also new tools that have been added as well. For example, we've now added the Clone Stamp tool, where you can select a particular area of a picture and you can paint that area somewhere else to mask something that you don't want to be there. A very handy tool to have for some bizarre reason. Whenever you access the Clone Stamp tool and try and make a change, all of the edits that you've done disappear from the preview. They come back again the moment you go off the Clone Stamp tool, but while you're actually trying to make those changes with the tool, you can't actually see any of your edits. And this has been a problem at times where you make a change, you maybe raise the shadows and then you see some problems. You go in to Clone Stamp them away, your shadows disappear again, you can't see where you're trying to edit. However, it's not all bad news because along with the addition of a clone stamp tool, they've also added an eraser tool, which fundamentally does the same thing, but does it using AI. So rather than manually selecting a target area that you want to replicate somewhere else, you can instead just erase over a particular part of the picture that you want to get rid of, maybe a random person in the background, and AI will automatically try and erase that particular section using the information that's around it. Very similar to the content fill in Photoshop. However, like the content fill in Photoshop, it obviously has its limitations. If you're trying to erase a very small part of a picture, it's generally not got a problem with it. If you're trying to remove half of your photo, it might get a little bit temperamental. Now, let's move on to the AI tools that have been added, because that's you know really the big selling point of Luminar AI. The first and foremost is Composition AI. Now, this is supposed to be that rather than having to manually crop your picture and correct distortions and tilts and horizontals, etc., it's meant to do all that for you with the click of a button. And to be fair, you click Composition AI and it does make all those changes. However, I personally am not that much of a fan of this tool because the changes that it generally offers, I'm not that keen on. Sure, it will automatically correct your horizontals and your vertical lines, but you can already do both of those with clicks of a button anyway. The big gain is supposed to be the automatically recommending a crop. However, more often than not, I'm not happy with the crop that it recommends, and I end up changing it myself anyway. Arguably, beginner photographers might find this tool quite handy if they're not familiar with the concepts of cropping and compositions, but for the most part, I've generally found this tool to be a bit of a gimmick that I've never bothered using. Anyway, moving on to the AI tools that I actually enjoy using. The sky replacement tool, which was present in Luminar 4, has been improved in Luminar AI. As I mentioned before, it is faster when you're making the changes. It's able to load new skies in a lot quicker. However, I've also found that it does a more effective job in Luminar AI than it did in Luminar 4. Quite often with Luminar 4, if your original image already had a lot of details within the sky, like clouds or stars, the replacement sky couldn't overlay them properly. It was really only effective if you had very bland looking skies. Now, Luminar AI has not completely fixed this problem, but it does a much better job. It's far less prone to the weird glitches and artifacts that sometimes would appear when replacing the sky with Luminar 4. They've also improved things like the fog tool. Now, the fog tool in Luminar 4 did seem to be a little bit of a pointless gimmick because you would add fog to a picture, but it would just 
like uniformly add a basically a lack of contrast across your entire picture, which is obviously not how fog works. With Luminar AI, Skylum claimed that it's able to see depth within a picture, and then you can add ground mist and layered fog that is supposed to be more representative of what you would actually see. And to be fair, when I've tried it, it does seem to be the case. It's able to recognize that the fog shouldn't be appearing really high up in the scene. It should be staying somewhere near the bottom of the picture and it sticks around the building. So it is able to produce a far more realistic look than you could with Luminar 4. But it's not just landscape shooters that are going to see improvements on Luminar AI as well. Portrait shooters can also find a host of improved and new features as well. Now, obviously, Luminar 4 did have some portrait enhancement tools. It had the ability to slim a face down, you could whiten your teeth, you could whiten the eyes, you can enlarge the eyes and enhance the eyes. All of those are still present in Luminar AI. However, for the eye changing tools, they've also added now the ability of you can change the color of people's eyes and you can also add flaring as well, little catch lights, etc. And not only can you now slim down your face, you can also slim down the body as well. Now, obviously, when I first saw these features, body AI and improving your abdomen, etc., then, you know, had to give it a go. So off comes the t-shirt, out comes the dad bod, and let's see how well it can do. Now, unfortunately, I was quite disappointed to find that the abdomen tool won't actually give you a six pack. Unfortunately, Luminar AI just isn't going to be the fad diet of 2021. But to be fair, it does slim you down pretty well. My only gripe with this tool is while it can slim down your body or fatten it up if you'd prefer, it only essentially changes everything uniformly rather than altering the shape of a body, which means it does limit how much of a change you can actually make. For example, I have my own little love handles on my side here. Now, if I was naturally to lose weight and actually make myself slimmer, my whole body would be much flatter all the way down the sides. But with the body slimming in Luminar AI, it just essentially squashes me down whilst keeping that same body shape. So my advice for these new tools is really no different than my advice for the pre-existing tools was when I reviewed Luminar 4. In very small, subtle proportions, these tools will enhance your portrait photos quite a lot and help add that little bit more punch and panache to your photos, who's been reading a dictionary this year. However, it's very easy to get very overzealous with these sliders and completely ruin your picture very, very quickly. So subtlety is really the word of the day when it comes to these tools. On a side note, in terms of reliability, because there were a few people who reported their versions of Luminar 4 either wouldn't load or would regularly crash, I've not personally experienced any problems so far with any of the versions of Luminar AI that I've tested, any of the pre-release or the final public version. At no point has it failed to load or crashed. That doesn't mean it won't in the future, but as of yet, everything seems to be fine. Now, as I've already said, the overall speed of Luminar AI is substantially faster in usability than Luminar 4. However, the export speed, whilst being a little bit faster than Luminar 4, is still nowhere near Lightroom. To demonstrate this, I did a test where I imported and then exported 21 compressed RAW files, the same files through AI, 4, and Lightroom, with no edits made, all of them saved to 100% quality JPEGs. They all came from the same folder on my computer, they all exported to the same folder on my computer, so it was all down to how quick the software is able to process the edits. Luminar AI was able to export the 21 RAW files in 4 minutes and 29 seconds, which was 11 seconds quicker than Luminar 4. A good step forward. But it wasn't quite the 23 seconds that Lightroom took. And there for me lies the big problem as to which is better between Luminar and Lightroom. There is no question for me that AI is better than Luminar 4. The overall speed and the intuitiveness, as I've already said, is substantially better. So your workflows will be quicker in Luminar AI in pretty much every respect. But in the argument between now Luminar AI versus Lightroom, it's again going to boil down to what, how you're editing your images and really what you're doing. If you're doing 
crazy big edits or you're only editing a small number of photos, then that difference in performance between AI and Lightroom isn't going to be that noticeable because really now the main difference is in terms of speed performance between those two is the export speed. So if you're not editing many pictures, you won't notice the difference. If you're going to be doing crazy big edits, then the time you've lost in the slower export time of Luminar, you will have saved in having to do some editing in Lightroom and then load everything into Photoshop and do all that work as well. However, if you're only making relatively small changes to your pictures that could all be done through Lightroom with no need for Photoshop, and you're going to be batch exporting a huge number of pictures, then Luminar is going to be substantially slower than Lightroom in that scenario. However, in any respect, there is still one advantage for Luminar over Adobe at the moment, which is the fact that unlike Adobe, you pay one fixed fee for Luminar and then you own it for life. And in terms of the price for Luminar AI, I might be slightly off on this because they're forever changing the price and having sales, etc. But I believe the usual basic price is $79 for Luminar AI on one device and $99 for on two devices. They do also offer a range of different bundles where you can get some of Skylum's other software and AI in a package. And they are also offering now uh, Luminar X membership along with Luminar AI, which gives you access to lots of new presets on a monthly basis and additional tutorial videos and editing tips, etc. So as I said at the start, if you're interested in checking any of those out, there is an affiliated link in the description down below that I will earn a commission from any purchases you make. So please consider using that link to help support this channel. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, if you have any questions or queries, the comment box is down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.